guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and in this video, we're going to be talking about ASCII. You may have heard the term before, but essentially it's the most commonly used format for text files in computers and on the internet. Computers themselves, they only understand numbers. ASCII is the numerical representation of each symbol in a character set. So if you think of, you know, letters, digits, punctuation marks, that sort of thing. In ASCII, each symbol is represented by an integer, or more specifically, a 7-bit binary number. Let's take a look at how this works. This is an ASCII table where we have four main columns, decimal, hex, octal, and character. Essentially, decimal, hex, and octal are all numerical representations of the given character. If you want to learn more about these representations, you know, learn how decimal numbers can be converted to octal or octal to hex and back and forth like that, be sure to leave a comment down below. Now, you may notice that the first 32 here are a little different from the rest. These are non-printing characters, and they're here because ASCII was actually designed for teletypes, which is a pretty old technology, and it would need to read and take account for these symbols for formatting purposes. If we go over to the right here, we'll see some characters that probably look pretty familiar. We have all of the uppercase letters, the lowercase letters, and symbols that we're used to using all the time. We can actually pick out a couple of these characters and see what decimal numbers they map to. And so here, like if we have lowercase n, that maps to 110, whereas, you know, uppercase v, that maps to 86. You'll also see that the HTML code for these characters is included as well. You've probably noticed that an ASCII table has a total of 128 characters, with values ranging from 0 to 127. This means that 7 bits, or 7 ones and zeros, are sufficient to represent a character in ASCII. But most computers reserve 1 byte, or 8 bits, for an ASCII character to allow room for growth in the size of the character or for a sign bit. Let's say we had the character K. The decimal value for this character is 75. And the binary for 75, and ultimately for this character, is 1001011. Now this is seven characters, but let's say we have a sign bit or something like that, we have some extra room, we want to use a whole byte for this, we want to use eight bits and not just seven. We'll go ahead and add a zero here, and now it's eight bits or one byte instead of just seven bits. Looking at another example, we'll do a lowercase z. Decimal value for that is 122. And the binary for that is 11110010, one, 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 zero, one, zero. and then we add a zero at the beginning so that way we have a full 8 bits, 1 byte. For one last example, we can do an uppercase B, decimal value for that is 66, and then the binary for that is 10000100. Zero, 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 zero. And then we can add a zero at the beginning to help it match the others, and so then we have four we have four, we have one full byte instead of just seven bits. Ultimately, we can convert between characters and their ASCII codes in our programs as well. Let's try a quick example. So we're gonna head over to an online editor called JDoodle and write some Python code. JDoodle is great if you just wanna write a quick program, see what it does without pulling out your IDE or text editor and command line. You can choose any language you like, but we're going to be doing this in Python 3. And in this case, we're going to convert a character into its ASCII code. The first step in doing that is to create a variable that will hold that character. So we'll call it first char, and we'll give it the value uppercase P. Then we'll go ahead and print it out. We'll say the ASCII code for the character, and then we'll put in our character, first char, is, and then we'll do a comma and put in ORD, which stands for ordinal, first char. And essentially, the ORD, or ordinal function, will convert first char into the counting position that it represents in its character set. And so it'll be, you know, whatever that character was mapped to, whatever that decimal value is, that's what it's going to return. 
Then we're going to convert an ASCII value into the character it represents. So we'll have a variable for the value, which will be 102, and then we'll go ahead and print out the ASCII value along with the character that it represents. And so to grab the character, we'll just do chr value, and chr stands for character. It's essentially changing the decimal value that's in that variable value and changing it into the character it represents. We'll go ahead and run it, and we'll add a little space here, take away the space here for formatting, and here we go, uppercase P represents 80, 102 represents F. Let's go back to our ASCII chart to see if this works. Here's our ASCII table. If we go to 102 here, we do in fact get lowercase f, and then if we go to uppercase P, it is in fact 80, which is what we got in our console here. We can do this in other languages too. Usually you do it by casting a value into a different data type. Let's do a quick C-sharp example. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click C-sharp, and that will pull us into the C-sharp language, give us a C-sharp editor, and in this we are going to write some code. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to make a comment here, you can just do slash slash in C-sharp, and you'll go converting ASCII value to character, and we'll create a variable char C, and we'll convert 89 into the character it represents. And then we'll do converting a character into an ASCII value. So in this case, we'll want to save the ASCII code and then convert T in this case to an int. Now that we have the swaps in place, we'll go ahead and write to the console and say the character for value 89 is, and then we'll put in our character C and then we'll do a quick little print line here, and then we'll write out the ASCII code for the character uppercase T. So here we have the character value for 89, the decimal number, the integer 89 is gonna be Y, and then the ASCII code for T is 84. So let's go to our ASCII table and double check this is right. 89 is our decimal value, y is the character it represents, and then 84 was another decimal value, and t is the character it represents. And that matches up with what we got in the console here. Now, what does this mean? Why does it matter that every character is mapped to an integer or a 7-bit binary number? ASCII files can be used as a common denominator for data conversions because it all comes down to the numbers. ASCII is a set of characters, which, unlike the characters in most documents, allow for no formatting like different fonts or italic text. All the characters used in emails are ASCII characters, and so are all of the characters used in HTML documents. This means when something doesn't load properly in your email, you might get an unformatted version that's based off the ASCII characters. So that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more technical tutorials and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I make videos every Wednesday and there are a few freebies in the description box down below. I hope you learned something new in this video and thanks for watching.